Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Thursday, April 13th, 2017 edition of VR News. Going to start VR News off with a medical field VR story. What I think sets this one apart, because let's face it, these typically aren't as exciting as gaming VR news stories are, but what sets this one apart isn't speculative, it's not a in the future physicians will and can, it's an application that's already at the stage where doctors, those dealing with cardiac issues, can actually use it already. So, the program in question, and I love the headline for this news piece, it's VR takes doctors on a fantastic voyage inside hearts. Now, of course, that's a reference to the cheesy sci-fi 1966 movie where a group of people were shrunk down to basically explore inside a human body. Now, with this, Dr. David Axelrod, he assisted in creating this application that allows physicians to take a look at a 3D model of the patient's actual heart. Now, they do point out that uh, echocardiograms, CRTs, MRIs, they are going to remain crucial tools, not just for diagnosis, but treatment. And for now, this is simply another tool in the physician's arsenal. What's so cool about this, though, is you can miss things on an MRI, on a CRT, echocardiogram. They all have their benefits and their negatives. And it's going to be the same with virtual reality apps like this but the strength lies in how they can look at the patient's actual heart. So when you've got an MRI, yes, you can zoom in, you can blow them up, but with this, you can blow them up and retain just absolutely amazing, stunning detail and capture things with the eye that you may otherwise miss. And Dr. Axelrod, who I mentioned and said helped create the app, he says... The following, even advanced imaging methods can leave gaps in how clinicians understand a surgically corrected heart's structure. If you cannot understand what the geometry is, what the anatomy and physiology are of the heart, you can make a mistake in later treatment. And that's where this can become such a critical tool, like I said, in their arsenal. They can literally look at things in a way that they have never been able to look at them before. And check out the link you're going to see in the video, the heart, or at least in the screenshots, actually floating in front of the physician in 3D glory. And it's absolutely amazing. All right, next news story. Uh, this was an initiative from Crytek. So they started this program fully with the intention of it growing its own wings and continuing on without them. Uh, and that's exactly what this program has done. It is called VR First and it is now fully independent and continues to grow. It was first unveiled last January, so January 2016, by the folks at Crytek and now is basically in top, uh, in top universities across the globe. 23 countries and some of the North American ones included in that are Purdue University, University of Florida, University of Southern California, Oklahoma State and Vancouver Film School which is close by me. So very cool. VR First is boasting more than 50 active projects. Now we talked about gaming VR being really exciting but Check out the stats here, guys. So games account for 35% of the projects underway under VR First. But here's the breakdown. So uh, fields like psychology and neuroscience, 12%. Education, 7%. Tourism, 7%. Architecture and real estate, 6%. And divided evenly across the HTC Vive and Rift development is. So each of those platforms accounts for 31% of the projects, 62% in total. So there's a little bit left over there, 38% if my math is correct. 
And how that breaks down is Samsung Gear VR, OS VR, and Daydream round out the rest of the statistics. Very cool. Next story. Bandai Namco's Tokyo-based VR arcade gets an official opening and closing date. So the whole time it's been seen as a temporary thing. Now, obviously, if this gets hugely successful, they may rethink that. But right now, it's meant to just give additional exposure to the Japanese, you know, tech-loving population because... VR hasn't done as well there as it's done in China, for example, and other regions. So I think this is a, a really good start. It's going to basically be called VR Zone Project I Can. And it's going to start April 15th, so this Friday, until October 10th of this year. So quite a few months to see this. If you happen to be in the Tokyo area, uh, yeah, it's going to be the largest VR arcade of its type. And we've looked at some other ones in Japan. Now, there's a video, it's about a minute, 24 seconds long, but shows part of what's on offer in that arcade in action. And then what I love is you can see they've got a circular kind of um, platform with a pink prop door right in the dead center. Now, obviously, that prop door lines up exactly with a door in VR. And you can see those that were trying this VR would open the door to find themselves in a completely different environment. And the one that I really liked was the Antarctic environment, complete with penguins and everything else. And uh, there's also a bit of a slideshow there. Even though most of the titles are in Japanese, I think the majority are, you're going to recognize a lot of those as Steam VR and Viveport offerings. So, very cool. If any of you happen to be in Tokyo during that time and check this out, please let me know, guys. Love to hear from you. Now, next story has to do with a haptic glove called Maestro VR Glove, and it uses motors, but not just motors for haptics, synthetic tendons. And that's where things get really interesting. Created by a company called Contact CI, these motors, according to them, pull off an intricate system of synthetic tendons that have been snaked through the retrofitted glove. It also contains sensors in the fingertips for additional power and performance features. Now, according to Upload VR employees who tried this out, they said that uh, once tightened, the whole thing felt snug and secure, not bulky or obtrusive like you would think it would just looking at it. And that the tendons were thin enough that they couldn't even feel them inside the glove. So it was connected to an HTC Vive and it's using one of the Vive trackers for the 3D orientation. It's designed to mimic real hand anatomy as close as possible and it's feedback delivered on a segment by segment basis throughout each of your individual muscles and fingers at the end of the glove. Just amazing, right? I mean, we talk about it so many times but the amount and difference with these gloves, even though we know full well Many of these, they're not going to be here to talk about in a year, two years, three years. But the technology that they're bringing to the table, it's not going anywhere. It's going to be incorporated, assimilated, whatever verbiage you want to use. And it's just amazing to see this kind of variety in VR. Just love it. Next up, Project Scorpio VR devs, according to Microsoft head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, will not have to sign exclusivity deals. That is huge. Even though we don't know what Project Scorpio is going to support, other than, of course, the Windows HMDs, the fact that there aren't going to be exclusivity deals is hugely, hugely telling. Now, they go one step further, not just to mention that there won't be exclusivity deals, but here's what Spectre had to say. So he said, because I think the Windows space is the place where most of the developer engagement is happening. I do not like that people are having to say, which of these ver VR verticals do I go pick right now as a developer? Because I don't think any of them are really big enough yet to support a single experience. 
my approach is going to be to try and take a more open and inclusive approach to VR. The problem is the other people who are creating closed ecosystems are probably not going to like that. They're probably not going to want to play. Now, how much of this, because we've heard this before, right? Oculus spoke very, very similarly and then kind of went in a different direction once they actually launched. I really hope Microsoft sticks to that, but not only that, I hope we see Rift, Vive, all work on Scorpio, not just their Windows 10 HMDs. I know I said that before and I'm harping on that again, but I think that is going to be huge because what they're saying isn't going to matter much if what's exclusive to their platform is simply going to be the Windows 10 HMDs, right? Next news story, the latest HTC Vives are shipping with tweaked base stations and redesigned packaging. So maybe uh, me and those of you who purchased a Vive around launch and within the last year are going to have boxes uh, with some value. I don't know if you guys kept your box. I kept mine. Obviously, you guys see it as a prop in the background. I didn't do that with the intention of you know, keeping it or being a pack rat. It was more just for warranty, being able to ship it back and forth. But now I may actually keep it. So apparently the newer base stations, guys, are nine LEDs instead of 15 LEDs. So that's a huge difference. Uh, just a little less than half of the LEDs, but apparently also brighter. Now, Road to VR did a test, very unscientific by their own admission, and it showed about a foot further. So 30 centimeters, 12 inches additional tracking capability for these new base stations. So uh, no word yet on when we can expect to see them start appearing, but based on what the article says, it's happening now. So I would imagine between now and summer, uh, you're probably going to start seeing these trickle in to bundled Vive, HTC Vives that you purchase. And when asked why the change, they didn't get a specific answer, but for sure it's probably going to be cost, right? Because they're reducing components, they can bring the price down a little bit at some future point, they're streamlining the technology, it's getting better and taking advantage of that. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully, all in all, just going to be more efficient. That's it for the news, guys. On this Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. Like I said, sadly, not a gaming Friday. We're going to postpone that until Sunday. And then Saturday, a tra uh, travel day. So video is probably going to be a bit later, but for sure, guys, I will get it out. Guys, cheers, as always.